Philip, uh, we're here to talk about grid. So the idea of grid is to bring the human uh, closer to your operating system. Uh, we always wanted to have uh, Ethereum like always present to have people using our computer. Uh, so as much as you have you know, DNS uh, services, Windows servers, and computers, like uh, ev from everywhere in the operating system, you can access HTTP requests. So we'd like to have this uh, for Ethereum. So our interpretation of, of this uh, design it, uh, you know, we, we, and then we would develop uh, grid as it is. Now. This is how we should, uh, you know, just turn on a few on your computer. This should be just as simple as this. So yeah, guys, this is grid. Peter. <laughs> right, and that's my thing. So here it starts with a menu application, and then you can just uh, click on the switch, start get, and then it, if you don't have it downloaded, you download and connect uh, using the live plan. So if you click it, you, you go straight to the uh, more details page. Uh, here we've got uh, links documentation, community, uh, some apps. Version list, you can upgrade, downgrade uh, just with a click, you just you know, travel using switches, uh, the version for you. Uh, here you can uh, use this form to uh, well, configure a node, and that results in a series of flags uh, related to that. We've got some sensible defaults and even some cool stuff like uh, presets for MetaMask. So here you can you know, just edit your uh, flags to go beyond uh, what we provide now. So you can just copy, edit, uh, do whatever you want. Yeah. To start to just flip it like just like that. Uh, small interface and then you take you straight to the terminal with you know the regular output. Uh, we also provide some uh, you know node information so you can have sync uh, status. Um, and of course when I was testing you could get here. <laughs> okay. So uh, one aspect that's uh, good to highlight is uh, how Grid can serve as an Ethereum app store for the tooling and launchpad as well. So app stores, what do they usually do? They help with uh, app discovery and you know securely installing software, just like your uh, phone app store. So like you have discovery, so. Uh, here we, uh, we help users uh, finding, uh, well, Ethereum nodes and tools and apps. We'll talk about, uh, more about this later. And we handle all the installation of it, uh, file integrity, security, code signing, uh, and launchpad, which is uh, how easy it is to configure it uh, and zero friction to run. So, you know, uh, the ecosystem has, you know, tenfold and at least in number of clients. So we have like this in 2015, and then 2019, and then you know the list, you know, is just increasing a lot. So here now, uh, this is what you get out of the box with Grid, uh, and uh, we call these uh, plugins, which could be either uh, Ethereum nodes, uh, you know, the client, it could be even. Uh, like IPFS, this uh, uh, storage uh, tool. So, plugins. From there, we can uh, define lots of uh, uh, fields uh, that they are all defined in a single file. Uh, so, we can have things like this, which is not uh, bundling a gap by default, but we can, have, we can just uh, you know, provide this uh, preset. So in a, what, what, has a, uh, what does uh, get plugin have? We got the releases feed, so we pull uh, downloads uh, directly from uh, the get source and not from any third party uh, package manager. Uh, we, got, we put the default flags, we put some sensible defaults, uh, the communication protocol, it, it is all defined on the plugin itself. So Grid doesn't have anything hard coded for gathering or like this, which is good for extensibility because we can uh, Integrated with uh, you know virtually any other client, so it's more documentation related apps. So this is, all goes in a single file, 
And as such, we can have several others, including yours. <laughs> so what are grid apps? Uh, so they, these are uh, self, self package web applications that run offline. They are unpacked and verified using our own packaging system. Uh, and you know, anyone can view those apps and anyone can use it. So we'll talk about, uh, about this uh, in detail later. So grid can be really useful for onboarding developers uh, in a different approach. So several de developers start today using uh, gateways, uh, you know, some other tools. They're like, uh, you know, on the flag of uh, standing for using real nodes uh, for development. You can just start a local development plan, um, uh, chain on your computer and then start developing with it. So, yeah, theory nodes are not for miners. Developers can also use them, so you should just do this one. And as well, uh, <coughs> lives the deeper node. Uh, we can have uh, things like this. How cool is that? So we can start a beacon with it. Then we can start, you know, a small fluster validator, uh, spinning up some uh, shards on it. And then we can have lots of others. Uh, then we can just swap the beacon. And then, you know, keep signing, keep uh, profiting. So yeah, Grid can help 2.0 make Ethereum uh, more inclusive, providing tools, UI tools for everyone, uh, shortening the feedback loop of these uh, developments, uh, hopefully speeding up iterations. Uh, of course, we're already talking with uh, some core developers on these regards. And compare across implementations, which is uh, really important for this stage of the project. Uh, and using great apps to manage state monitor validators and uh, beacon nodes. So under the hood, and as uh, Mr. Philip. Thank you, Ed. So as we learned, Grid already comes with a bunch of clients out of the box, and there's many more clients that will probably be integrated in the future. And you can really think of Grid as a decentralized package man manager. All these different clients already have their own release management. They all have their own formats uh, that they provide. Some have Docker files, some provide binaries, maybe not all platforms. Um, some need to run a script before they can be started. Uh, this was the, the first challenge for us to have this kind of communication with the, with the client providers, how we can define good standards. Um, the, other, the other big challenge for us is, of course, they all have different hosting, so we need to talk to a bunch of backends. Um, and these are probably the most like prominent and, and relevant backends, but they are all very centralized. And maybe in the future someone decides, hey, I want to host my binaries and IPFS, or maybe something we don't know yet. And we wanted to not restrict grid. We wanted to allow all these like, projects to keep their release management strategy. And we would, we would adopt to it, and we, we needed to uh, engineer grid in a way so that it's flexible for the future. And this brought us very quickly to the, the big challenge, which is security. Like, how can we make sure that if we, if we don't know the, the origin, or if we don't know the connection between the, the project and the origin, how can we make sure that the clients, that the users are knowing, that they are, that they are legit, that they are safe? And we came up with a with our own package signing scheme. Um, we have a package format, specification, a reference implementation, a CLI tool, and an EIP draft, and this all goes under the name Ethereum Sign Packages. And I will briefly describe why we are, at this point, reinventing the wheel and not just use any like, package signing that is out there. So package signing is a, is a critical piece of grid, and it has basically just two steps, right? You sign a package, you verify a package. In traditional code signing, uh, usually you, you want to have a hardware device that, that stores your private keys or your certificate and these devices are usually purchased as a description and you pay up to $1,500 per year. This is difficult for open source um, because not everyone has the, these funds. Do I actually need the microphone? Or is it? I will continue. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
for Ethereum side packages, you can use your existing hardware devices that store your private keys, such as your ledger. <coughs> but you don't even need to pay something. You can also use two side MetaMask to sign packages now. And then for the verification step, signed packages have, signed packages have really nice properties, such as authentication, integrity, and non-repudiation. And you get the same with Ethereum, Ethereum signed packages. But this is not all that goes into it. If you do the authentication step and you want to know, like, who's the author of the package that I'm, I downloaded, you usually validate it against an identity or a certificate. And this is also part of the sign-up process. Before you can get the device, you need to register with the certificate authority. They issue the certificate and they do some background checks on you and you, you need to provide them with a lot of data. And this data is part of your, the package information. For Ethereum signed packages, if you do the, the verification step, you get an Ethereum address back, a public address. And this is cool for two main reasons. One is you can immediately send money to the address, to the author of the package. So now we can incentivize developers to actually sign packages and receive donations for this. It's not just that they have to do more work, they actually benefit from it. That's the main, main big step. The other thing is you can define your identity. So you can use some of these cool uh, emerging identity contracts to just specify relevant information that is needed to make sure that people can trust you. And you can provide information such as your GitHub handle instead of your company's address or your own personal phone number. We thought that, that this was really cool and we didn't just want to use it for the binary management, but we also started to sign our own software updates with it. Our user interface, we, we, we packaged the web UI independently of the binary so that the updates get smaller. We signed these updates to make sure that it's secure. Then we thought, hey, maybe we can also like, use other applications like Remix. So we made, made a test and actually loaded, um, uploaded Remix to IPFS and downloaded it and started it in Grid. And this brought us to the next evolution, which is um, Grid apps. So we thought that if we can, in a secure way, guarantee that these applications can be loaded, we can also extend it to applications that are not just provided by Ethereum Foundation teams, but also other developers. And this is um, Ethereum apps. Yeah, grid, sorry, grid apps. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, Grid consists of uh, two main uh, parts, right? First, uh, the first are plugins, the second are apps. So, uh, what's inside an app? And what does an app do? So, uh, an app can, can have a related client, an associated client, uh, a package URL, client settings, and local URL import. So, what does that mean? Uh, if an app depends and relies on, uh, let's say, yeah, let's say, uh, graphical, uh, that's the new graphical uh, interface for the yeah. uh, we have a, a, an app for this, uh, and it's uh, specified on it that it requires get to be started, at, uh, you know, and it has the uh, address and port of it, uh, and of course some settings uh, around it. So it's like a manifest file. Uh, to define how should that uh, little piece of uh, functionality should uh, behave. But, uh, you know, and this uh, all goes into a single file, and this is uh, GraphQL uh, in Excel. So here we have uh, on the apps uh, section of grid, you can have, uh, you can click on launch, and then if get is not started, it will prompt you saying, Okay, the application graphical uh, request to start with those flags, and then press OK to all this time. So it, it, now it, uh, it works with, uh, with specific clients, but it can also work with uh, client types. So it could be storage types. So from to you, okay, so we need to run this app with a storage client, so you can just you know, start your own fav your favorite uh, storage app, such as IPFS, Swarm, so, uh, self package app web application that run the client. You probably read this slide before. <laughs> right. So, uh, worth mentioning that grid apps are not dApps. So, the idea here is to provide lower level access to those clients. So, you can have dashboards, you can have monitoring systems. You can even connect to several clients at once using some uh, special API that we provide. 
So you can query clients uh, and, <coughs> and I've got three providers. That's the main difference. <coughs> Still another example of the Clef app. Uh, we made a UI for the Clef, uh, the Ethereum signer. And this is how it works. So we have here, uh, to the left uh, side in the sidebar, we have the Clef client. So you just open it, it will prompt you. Uh, it, it has two requirements. One is uh, Clef itself, the other is GAP. Uh, so when you start this app, it will prompt you, and then when you click OK, you would you would even download those uh, clients if you don't have them installed. So there's lots of things uh, under the hood. Uh, and then you can just uh, approve and sign uh, messages or transactions using this uh, you know, pretty app. Another example is the RPC Tester app. Uh, this one uh, makes you test uh, RPC calls for several clients, not only GAP, but you know, uh, every client that we have today uh, in grid. So it's a really nice way to test, you know, oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, to test those methods and then to get returns. It's like a little postman for Ethereum. And this is a small app. So. We made it out of fun and out of uh, grammatical purposes, and then, you know, people can do their own. So, grid. Ideas to discover, download, update nodes with just one click. Uh, it, it can even detect requirements, just such as, uh, you know, uh, in the case of Visu, uh, it requires Java, so we can, you know, just do our own magic to make sure that you have it. If you don't, it will prompt you to, you know, Go get it, or you know, try to install it. Uh, easily configure your nodes uh, with them uh, with some sensible defaults, the MetaMask uh, <coughs> presets, and registries that allow third-party plugins integrations. Uh, and that means uh, you could have such as a stream of plugins that are specific to your company if you work on an enterprise, uh, and then only your employees would see it. instead of having you know that's. Uh, that preset that we have today can have you know, your own uh, custom uh, stream of plugins. So we do have tutorials of things uh, that you can do and accomplish with Grid. Here's the link, uh, have fun. Um, I'll be free. So you can use MetaMask in a fully decentralized way. Uh, in that tutorial, we explain how to start GAT uh, in the live client mode and then connect it uh, using MetaMask preset. Uh, and you know, GraphQL, IPFS, you can open it uh, using Grid. So yeah, Ethereum App Store and Launchpad, onboarding developers, and a 2 course. Thank you for your time, this is the team, and this is the we're all of the website. We love you. Thank you. Uh, do we have time for questions? Uh, we have one more minute. One minute. <laughs> <laughs> If you run two apps and they have conflicting requirements for the flags for those, you'll try to start GAT twice. Sorry? You will try to start GAT twice. Oh, okay, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay.